Guys and girls, welcome back to Scene TV. I'm Marcus, and we have got more of the Adelaide Fringe 2017 season coming your way with the delightful Matt Tarrant. He's a magician. He's performing his show, Honestly Dishonest. It's a bit of a contrast play of words. I see what he's done. Um, Matt, welcome to Scene TV. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. Really appreciate so, it. Um, what brings you to the Adelaide Fringe this year? Tell us about the show. Yeah, so Honestly Dishonest is my new show. Uh, so it's an hour of like interactive magic, mentalism, a lot of fun. Fun, um, and a little bit of comedy as well. We're finding, for some reason, I'm getting funnier as I get older, um, or at least I think I'm getting funnier. So a bit of comedy and stuff in it as well. So um, it's just a really engaging, interactive magic show. Um, a lot of fun in a really big venue. Can we actually, can we just talk about your big budget advert? <laughs> Look at it, guys. Full pack. You've, you've all got this. You've all seen this. That. The Fringe Guide. Um, look at his ad. It's huge. It's amazing. Um, you're actually playing until the end of um, the Fringe season, yeah. March the 19th. Yeah, March the 19th. And that is an expensive ad as well. And I can assure you, it did not come from my money. I, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of cash. So It is awesome. It's really, really cool. Um, and very sexy as well, guys. Um, playing in Gluttony in Rymel Park. Um, and tickets are fringeticks.com.au. Make sure you get along. Um, but... Anyways, how did you fall into doing magic? It was funny, it was when I was like seven or eight, I saw my first magic show, and I talk about that in the actual show as well, um, how I saw this magician at the Adelaide Fringe and I fell in love. But I think I was so young at that point, I didn't realize I could actually learn what he was doing. I just assumed he was like a wizard. Um, and it wasn't until I was 18, I was working at a bank, um, and I met this other guy at the Adelaide Fringe who was doing magic. He also worked at the bank and he just taught me some stuff and I just went from there. I was Did money disappear? Money started disappearing. Yeah. I ended up leaving the bank. Um, <laughs> well, because you yeah. got sacked. I got sacked. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, there were criminal <laughs> charges, everybody. <laughs> and then I just decided to do magic full time and that's what I've been doing the last five years. So it's been pretty crazy, a pretty insane ride, but it's been a lot of fun as it's well. It's not the only thing you've done the last five years. Done a few things. You did a bit of a TV show last year, didn't you? Yeah, so it was Survivor. On, on Survivor as well, which was yep. a lot of fun. Um, so that was well, three or four months of my life last year. So that was pretty insane as well, yeah. Did they get you to do magic tricks on the show? I wanted to do magic on the show. Like, because you're allowed to get um, one item, you're allowed to bring one item with you, and my item was a deck of cards. Um, and I may have like secretly opened the deck of cards and like hidden a few little other things in it. Just like tricks, but a few other things. Um, and then the night before we started filming, they came into my hotel room and told me, we're not having items anymore, you can't have your cards. And I was like, really devastated. Because for me, a deck of cards, like it's always been a comfort kind of thing as well. Uh, if I feel a little bit sad or down, cards are there and I can have a bit of a play and I feel good. Um, I didn't have it. So it's pretty tough to do magic when you just have like rice and sand. Um, there's like <laughs> not a lot of tricks about with them. So, and um, insects, creepy crawlies. Yeah, that sort of stuff as well. But um, yeah, it, it, it did make it pretty tough for me. So no magic on the island, unfortunately. I think it's really funny that, um, you know, you get one item to take onto the islands. Most of the people probably would have been taking along their family photos. You know, <laughs> my, this is my girlfriend, this is my boyfriend. These are my cards. Yeah, yeah. It was funny. It was when I spoke about what everyone else had, well, what, what they were going to bring, it was all like, a beautiful like love note or like a photo and I'm like yeah I was, um, I was gonna do tricks so <laughs> yeah I guess I didn't really think about it so much but I did fortunately on the show I ended up getting a, a letter from my fiance as well so that was nice so you got through yeah, got through with that that was good um, would you do it again uh, like if they asked me in like four or five years I'd consider it not right now though like it's, it's, it's a real mental and physical challenge like it's not just going and competing and having a bit of fun you're like literally your body goes through hell yeah um, yeah and i think it's only been the last like couple of weeks now when my body started to realize i'm not that hungry anymore i don't need to like take in every single thing i eat because like there was a time I, I lost 14 kilos out there but i gained it in like two weeks and i was eating pretty good food but my body was just taking in everything um and they were saying that like last like six to 12 months where your body is just in shutdown mode and it will panic and everything you eat it just takes store it all away. So yeah, yeah I, got, I got pretty chubby for a little <laughs> while there. But, um, but yeah, so I'll do it again in a, in a little while maybe. In the meantime, focusing on the magic. Magic so, is what it's at. Um, Fringe, have you done many of the fringes before this year? Yeah, so this is my, it's my seventh Fringe before oh, my whoa. fifth proper Fringe. Okay. Um, so we really started in 2012 where we did my first show, which I produced and directed myself. Um, did a show called Three, uh, a show called Mind Blown, and then for the last few years it's been a show called Deception as well, which was a show I did with a guy called Vin Jan, um, and it was like a duo show, which went really well, 
won a heap of awards. I actually saw that last year. You might have, I yeah. remember that. Last year was with a younger guy. So we, I brought in one of my young guys called Matt, who was a 17-year-old magician. He did his first show with me uh, in a 430-seater venue, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and he's now doing his own solo show this year as well. So I've been kind of developing a few young acts as well just so they can get to the level where we're at as well. So Matt's one of them. So it's really cool to see he's him doing well now as well. But this year is all about you. This is all about me, yeah. yeah. The focus is just on the solo show, basically. So uh, it's been 26 shows we've got booked in uh, and the venue is like 500 plus. It's that one is of the huge. biggest venues in the Fringe. It's ridiculous. Well, clearly you deserve it. Biggest well, ad, biggest venue. Yeah, hopefully. Biggest budget. Biggest budget, yeah, which isn't my money. <laughs> Not your money. We're going to yeah. make that clear. <laughs> um, hey, you got some cards with us today. Yeah, I thought, Why? I, I thought I'd show you something. Really? I'll show you a trick. It's Come actually, on then, let's one, do it. It's actually one of the tricks from the show. So okay. I thought it'd be cool to get, give you a little bit of a teaser. Um, yep. And this is a trick that's inspired by one of my favourite magicians. His name is Rene Levan. Uh Renee is this incredible old Argentinian magician, and he was incredible because he only had one arm, uh, literally. Like, Google him after this. Rene Levan, uh, magician, only one arm, really special. But I'm not going to use the whole deck. I'm going to make it nice and easy for you. In fact, we're not going to use uh, all 52 praying cards because inside a deck there's 52. Uh, there's 26 red, 26. Black. Black, yeah. yeah black, black, black. Have That's to think a, about that hey, for a it's second. It's early then. in the morning, guys. It is early, but uh, we're not going to worry about all 52 playing cards. All I'm going to do is worry about uh, six of those playing cards. Three black and three red. Don't worry about the rest of the deck, but um, I'll just place them to the side as well just for later on. Uh, so we've got the three red and the three black, and this is a trick he would call all on water. Yep. Uh, so what he would do, he'd get those black cards, the three black cards, and those three red cards, and just like this, with no sleight of hand whatsoever, just the red and the black. He'd take the black and the red, and nice and slowly, he'd place one of those red face down on the table, followed by one of the black, followed by a red, followed by a black, a red, and finally, that black. Now, with no sleight of hand whatsoever, they're mixed, right? I couldn't have done that slower. But if you just snap your fingers over those cards, good. Oh, it's like, yeah, just there, like there we go. Uh, and you actually see those cards, they separate the three red no. and the three black. But I know what you're thinking. Maybe there was some sort of sleight of hand. So I want to do it even... I'm thinking there was a bit of magic. Maybe, but I want to do it even slower for you then. Just those three black and those three red cards. This time even slower. Okay, even slower. Just the three black and the three red. No crossing over, no sleight of hand. I don't know sleeves either. Just the black and the red. I'm going to place one of those red face down on the table followed by one of the black cards. A red card followed by a black card. A red and finally a black. Now, with no sleight of hand whatsoever... I couldn't have done it slower, right? Mm -hmm. You're right here. But if you just snap your fingers again for me, you'll see those cards, once again, they separate the three red and the three black. Is it, it me? Is it, it me and my see, clicking? It is. It, it is. is. And you know what? It? I want to show you how much it is you. Because this time, what I'm going to do, uh, you're going to take those three red cards. Even give them a good shuffle for me as well. Make sure there aren't just three red cards. And when you're happy, there are just three red cards. What I want you to do is place any of those red cards face down on the table for me. Any of the red cards face down on the table. Wherever I can see, that is just a red card followed by a black card. A red card followed by a black card. A red. Show me what's a red. A red. It's a red. Followed by a black. Now, with no sleight of hand whatsoever, we couldn't have done it any slower, right? This is all on you. But if well, you I don't do magic. I, I wouldn't know. But if you just snap your fingers for me again, just like that, Marcus, you'll see those cards, they separate the three red <gasps> and the three black. But, here's the thing, I'm a magician, and magicians lie. And at the start of this trick, I told you just to worry <coughs> about these six playing cards, but I'm a magician. I lied, I'm sorry, because here's the thing. If you're watching the rest of the deck, you would have seen those cards, well, they too separated the red and the black, just like that, and that is oil and water. Guys, that's why you need to get tickets for the Sky <laughs> Show. I couldn't have been any closer that was that was outrageous, totally. I didn't even know what to say. Yeah. Except I would never ever play poker with you. No, don't. Ever. <laughs> or go fish. Or old maid or snap or whatever these games are called. Yeah. Uh, that is outrageous. Well done. Magic, yeah. Um awesome. So um do you find when you're doing your tricks, like where do you come up with all where do you conjure up all these ideas so what, how do you do your show you get inspired by like other magicians as an example for that so that like originally this guy did this trick um he used to do it with one arm only um and then i wanted to take that trick and take it to my level so i added a few different things to it um but you get inspired by other magicians and then like day-to-day -day things as well you just see something and you kind of go i wonder how we can make that into a trick 
and like our brains are always working and co- like trying to conjure up something new. Um, like we're already writing our next show, and it's just literally some of those tricks have been been put together for like the last seven or eight years. Things that we've come up with, and eventually they get to the point where we can actually perform them in a show. So you were just always creating, come up with ideas, and um, magicians actually share stuff as well. So there's like a marketplace for magicians. So a magician will come up with a trick and go, maybe it's not my sort of thing, but it might be someone else's. So they'll Pass off it. to Matt. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's really cool. So I've got two magicians, uh, one from Melbourne and one from Las Vegas, and they actually create magic just for me as well. So. Um, it's a really weird world, magic, but it's good fun. And so you do mentalism as well, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Um, how do you get into that? Like, so what's that about? I was inspired by a guy called Darren Brown, and Darren's like probably the best mentalist in the world, this UK guy. Um, and he uses things like psychology, body language reading, uh, mind reading, this sort of stuff, um, and uses that up on a stage. Uh, and so he kind of inspired me to get into it as well. So again, I learned from some of those really good guys in how to do it, um, and now some of the mentalism we do on stage is, um, it's it's pretty good. There's a, a lot of risk taking, um, and then so, so sometimes it does go wrong, but that's kind of entertaining as well, I think, because it shows people that, well, it is real. Like, if, if it wasn't real, it probably wouldn't ever go wrong. Um, it'd just be magic. Um, but yeah, it goes wrong a fair bit, but it's entertaining when it does. So yeah, but there's some pretty pretty cool stuff in the show. Come check it out. I love it. So, and what have the reviews been like? All good? Have yeah. as well, everyone's been walking away going, yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean, I think the crowd love it, and I think the crowd love that. I, I try not to showboat the show too much as well. Like it's very much, um, it's an engaging, and I want people to connect to me as well a little bit. So I, I'm pretty casual, um, and I think people like it. It's not the glitz and glamour of Vegas. It's very much, it's real. It's kind of Adelaide. Um, and people enjoy it. They kind of go away rather than seeing this big, like, holy magician. They've seen a friend who can do tricks up on stage, but that is really good tricks. Um, so the reviews have been great. Uh, we've had, I don't think we've had less than a four star review yet anywhere we've taken the show. So, great. which is just like that doesn't happen. So, we're really happy with the reviews. Um, the audience love it. That's, that's the main thing for me, though. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Matt, what an absolute pleasure. It's been I good. wish you all the best for the rest of the season. As I said, guys, his advert is in the Fringe Guide. He's playing in Gluttony. Um, in, what room is it? The, uh, in the Peacock in the for peacock the next room. couple of days. And then I head over to Octagon for the Octagon. last few weeks. Until March the 19th. 19th. Yes, so get your tickets. Come along see Matt. Matt, what a pleasure to have awesome. you on stage. Thanks so much for having me. Um, on stage, on our sets. Um, you've been watching Scene TV. We'll see you again for more really soon. Ciao. Bye, guys.